Let's quickly talk about PIE, uh, Position Independent Executable. So executables that can be placed anywhere in memory and are affected by ASLR. It used to be that when you compile binaries, then uh, libc and other libraries were using ASLR, but the binary itself was always loaded at a fixed address for you to recognize and was easy to work with. Now, when the full binary has position independent code, so it can be moved anywhere in memory, it gets a little bit more tricky. So I quickly wanna show some issue that you might run into when you try to do this and then how you can get around it. So here I'm using just uh, a compiled example from format four uh, of exploit education, proto start challenges, whatever, it doesn't matter what this program is. I'm just here trying to show you how to uh, debug this. So when you load this in GDB and it's a not stripped binary, it still has the symbols you can simply break in main. So this works fine. It says it set a breakpoint at this address 807. And when we now run the program, we get a breakpoint. But notice that the breakpoint address is different. We hit the breakpoint at 555554807. Now the offset is the same. It's 807807. And these offset will always be the same. So when you know the base address and you know where it's like placed in memory, you can always go by this offset. And with infoproc mappings, you can also when the process is running, like in this case, we just hit the breakpoint, so the process is still running, you can look at the memory map. And so here you can see that the binary was loaded at this start address, 5554. And so the whole binary is just placed there in memory. And so the binary itself, when you were setting the breakpoint, you saw uh, the internal offset, so from 0, 807, and now obviously it's like loaded at this address, so now you just have to add this, and that's how you can get to the the actual real address. So basically lesson number one, uh, when you see very, very small addresses like this that basically are in the range from like zero to a bit something, and it's not an address like 8000 or 400 something, but it's these small addresses, then it's very likely that you have position independent executable and, it, and it's affected by ASLR. And then the second lesson is that uh, these are just offsets from inside the binary and so you can figure out where the binary is loaded, and so uh, the main function will be at the respective offset. Now, you should be aware that GDB basically disables ASLR when debugging like this. So even when you rerun the binary now, you will notice that the breakpoint is again at the same address. But you must not use this for your exploit because this is because you have to imagine that this is all ASLR. All these upper bits or these bytes here are completely randomized when you are actually uh, running this in a regular system, not with GDB. So don't use this to hard code addresses in your exploit. Basically only at runtime you will know where it is then placed in memory and like I said, GDB kind of like disables ASLR in this case and so you will uh, know from there where it is. Same goes for the stack and all these other uh, libraries here outside of GDB, in reality, they will be somewhere completely else. You can easily see this. Now let me quickly open a new tab and just execute the binary. Now I know this has a call to get, so it's waiting for input right now. And so let's get the PID. And then let's attach to this process. Oh, ptrace not permitted. Let's sudo this. And now you can see that all the addresses are widely different and you and these are here uh, randomized. And when you uh, now do break main, it will find obviously the main function again. And you can see here it's still at the offset 807, but this time it's from this base address. Anyway, I just want to show you that ASLR is actually affecting the stuff and you have to go up these offsets. Now, when you set break to main like this, it says that the breakpoint is set at 80B. And when you execute it, it somehow magically uh, set it at the correct address and was breaking actually when the process loaded at, at this random address basically. Now here's a little bit of magic happening internally from GDB. I don't know exactly, but I guess it knows that you want to set a breakpoint at the symbol main. And once the binary is loaded, it knows where this symbol is and can then properly set a breakpoint there. But let's actually try a stripped binary that doesn't have the main symbol. So here's the same program compiled, but stripped. If you try to set a breakpoint to main, it doesn't work. It says uh, function main is not defined. Now I showed you how to find main regardless. 
info files, we find the entry point. Let's print 10 instructions from this entry point. Oh, this was close. Uh, I guess the, the 11th instruction is actually the call, which we know as libc start main. So this actually should be the address of our main function. So let's disassemble 10 instructions at this address here. This is our main function for sure. And we can also see it's actually at the same offset as the uh, stripped compiled binary. So that's also consistent in this case. So you know this is main. So let's try to set a breakpoint there. And it says the same thing, breakpoint one at 807. This is exactly the same output like the not strip binary when we did the breakpoint at main. But now let's execute this. Warning, cannot insert breakpoint one, cannot access memory at address 807. And this makes sense because the program is loaded somewhere else in memory. It's not loaded at 000807. It's loaded at 5555807. But this basically immediately happened when you try to start. So we get here now an opportunity to look actually at the memory map. And you can see it's so early in the process that we do have the dynamic library, the, the loader here, but uh, we haven't even loaded libc yet. Anyway, now we can basically do our calculation and then set the proper uh, breakpoint here at this start address plus the offset that we know where main is. And you can't continue, it will just uh, <laughs> abort the command. So let's delete that first breakpoint. And now let's continue and now we have a breakpoint in main. And now we can single step through our program. And now when you rerun, because GDB disables ASLR and it will always be at the same address, uh, you can also just rerun the binary as often as you want. It will successfully now set the main breakpoint. That maybe feels a little bit dirty. So there's another way you can do this. So let's set a breakpoint at start. Function start not defined. But GDB offers to make a pending breakpoint that in case a shared library is loaded that has this function defined, it will uh, set a breakpoint there and you will break there. So let's do this. Breakpoint one start is pending. And now let's run the binary. And that works. Uh, we hit the breakpoint and start. And this is actually a function contained in the Linux loader, LD. And this works obviously because the binary itself is stripped, but it uses dynamic libraries that, that still have the symbols included. And in this case, it's the Linux loader. And so there's this function underscore start. And again, this gives us the ability to then look up where in memory uh, all this stuff is. And from your reverse engineering with Ghidra or Ida or Binary Ninja or whatever, you know at what offset uh, the main function is, and then you just have to add this offset to the base address, 807, set a breakpoint there, continue. So now we also hit our breakpoint in main. So yeah, it gets a little bit ugly with ASLR. Um, it's, it's not the nicest to work with, but I hope now you have somewhat of an idea how to deal with it. It might be a bit tedious, but it works out, I guess. Oh, but before we end this, let me just quickly show you the offset thing again. So here's the uh, format for strip binary opened in Ghidra. And from our known method, how to identify mine, uh, we find now here the main function. And let's say we want to set a breakpoint here in GDB. It's a bit small, but in Ghidra, here it says the main function is at 100807. Obviously, we know it should just be 807. So I just want to make sure you are aware of this and why this is the case. And so you can properly identify what the offset is. So obviously, if you would add 100807 to the uh, base address that you find in the memory mappings, it would be the wrong address. But the reason for this is where Ghidra just like assumes where it's loaded. And so let's check out the memory map that Ghidra assumes. And when you open that, you will see that it starts loading the binary at 1000. Everything is at this offset. And so the text section where our code lives also starts at 10690. So you can see that by in Ghidra, everything is at this offset. In other disassemblers, uh, it, this might be a different value. So you need to be aware of where your disassembler is assuming the code starts. You can basically figure this out if you have a view like this, just scroll all the way to the top and you can see here this file here, this elf binary elf uh, starts at 100 in here. So when you identify a function and you want to set a breakpoint in GDB, be sure to only take the actual offset here. Okay, so this was really everything I wanted to show. See you tomorrow. Ah, uh, wait, I have another thing I could show you. So when you execute the binary again, it's waiting for input. So it's running right now. 
You can actually find this memory map in the proc file system. So the process ID of this process right now is 22783. In proc, you can find a folder with that uh, process ID. And there are a lot of files included. And we are interested in the maps file. And so if you cut the maps file, you will now get a very similar output to what you saw in GDB with the memory map. And so you can see here again where the binary is loaded. And because of ASLR, you also see that the start address is now again very different. So right now this process is at 557CD991E. And then the main would be at 807 uh, added on, on top of this uh, base address. OK, that, that was really it. OK, I have one other idea. For debugging and just to make things easier, you could also just disable ASLR. So you can check if ASLR is enabled uh, also in the proc file system with randomized VA space. And yes, it's, it's currently turned on. So, so let's make sure that sudo works so that you don't have to enter a password. And then we can just write a zero into that file. Let's uh, verify. So now it's zero. Now there shouldn't be ASLR. So now let's test this. We execute our process. And then let's use the proc file system to look at the memory map of this process. Uh, I'm getting now dynamically the number with PID off. Uh, so this will be evaluated and replaced with the PID. And look at that. ASLR looks disabled. Now the address looks exactly like in GDB. So let's kill that process and execute it again, a different PID. Let's check again the memory maps, and it stays the same. So now when you take notes with addresses and you set breakpoints, you can be really, really sure that it's always at the same address. Th th this makes things easier, at, at least during the early kind of like debugging and exploration phase. Just be aware that the challenge server in the end or the challenge should also work under ASLR. So always be aware that you can't rely on hard-coded addresses like this, at least when, you, when you're interested in doing like an exploit. OK, that, that was really it. See you tomorrow. Just kidding. One last thing. There's one thing you can do to jump between Ghidra and GDB better back and forth so you don't have to do the offset calculations all the time. So let's see that our binary is loaded at the start address. So we can copy that. And then in Ghidra, we go to the memory map. And then the top right, you can find this house symbol, which stands for set image base. Now we can see here that the base address where Ghidra assumes this image, this binary to be placed is at 100. And so we can replace that with the address that we got from the memory map. OK, OK, these arrows were weird, but it seemed to have worked. Now you can see that the function that we assume to be main is at this address here. So we can copy that address. And in GDB, we could set now a breakpoint there. And we can also disassemble the instruction there to verify. Yeah, this looks like the short main. All right, that was really it. See you tomorrow. Just one more thing. Just kidding. It was really it. That was it. That was it.